Hello, everyone, and welcome to day two of our preparation to consecrate our lives to Mary. So thank you once again for joining us. Today is also a unique chapter. We're talking about... Angels. Angels. So last week, we talked about the setting which Our Lady entered into, the village, and this is also a little bit connected. Something else was going on before Mm -hmm. Our Lady appeared. And I didn't know too much about this until we started reading the book. So what did Sister Lucia see? We saw something like a white cloud in the shape of a human being, which had come down from the sky and was passing slowly in front of us, above the trees that stretched down to the valley at our feet, as if wishing to attract our attention and keep our eyes fixed on it. And she says that it's her interior conviction Mm -hmm. that what they saw was the guardian angel. And I found that language interesting. Because she doesn't say whose guardian angel was, she just says the guardian angel. And her reason for sharing this experience I also thought was interesting. It's simply to educate us on the fact that we have a guardian angel. Mm -hmm. She's not trying to draw attention to this apparition. She just wants to talk about it. It's a very brief section in the book. And then she spends the rest of the chapter talking about the intervention of angels in people's lives throughout the Old Testament and New Testament and to draw our attention to the fact that God has given us a guardian angel. So why does God first send an angel before Mary starts appearing? Sister Lucia writes, to address to us yet another call to obey his law and remember the end for which we were created. So what is the purpose that we were created for? And what is the purpose of our life? If you remember the Baltimore Catechism of the Catholic Church, restated in the Universal Catechism of the Catholic Church, to know, love, and serve God in this life and to be happy with Him forever in heaven. God in His providential kindness has given us an angel to help us in this mission, the purpose of our life, Mm -hmm. to know, love, and serve God in this life, which, when we are faithful to that, leads us to the eternal reward, which is heaven, Mm -hmm. union with God. So heaven is the fulfillment of all desire. And that's what we're created for, union with God. So regarding guardian angels, a saint comes to mind, and that is Padre Pio. He died in 1968. Mm-hmm. He's a stigmatist. He had the wounds of Christ in his hands, feet, and side. Mm-hmm. And it is said that when he was a little boy, he could always see his guardian angel. And in fact, throughout his whole entire life, with his eyes wide open, what an incredible grace. But it's what, what is unique is not only could he see his own guardian angel, it is said that when he was a little boy, he was surprised that the boys that he would pl- play with couldn't see their own guardian angel <laughs> because he could see them too. So apparently this was a gift that he had throughout his whole life. And when he became a priest, entered religious life in that friary, uh, his fame started to spread. He's known for great holiness and also his his mysticism, his mystical experiences. And people started developing this practice of sending their own guardian angel to Padre Pio because they knew Padre Pio could see their guardian angel with a prayer request. So there's a story with two girls who have heard of this practice and are doubting whether or not this is true or not of sending angels to Padre Pio. So they decide to test it. So one night, they decide, okay, guardian angel, go to Padre Pio and ask him to pray for my uncle Frederico. And the other girl says, can you ask for a cure for my cousin? And throughout the whole night, these two girls are sending prayer requests to their angel to Padre Pio. Well, the next day, they go to Mass at the friary. And after Mass, they go forward to Padre Pio to receive a blessing. And they're surprised because he is upset with them. (laughs) He says... You know, you kept me up all night. First, you send your angel to ask for prayers for your uncle. And then you ask for prayers for your cousin. And you keep on sending your angels all night. And I didn't get any sleep. You kept me up all night. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I share this story with you because I think oftentimes Mm -hmm. we do not appreciate the fact that God has given us a guardian angel. Mm -hmm. And a little challenge to you is when's the last time you asked your angel's intercession? Mm -hmm. My encouragement Do not neglect your angel, angel's intercession, as we prepare to consecrate our lives to Our Lady, because they're there to help. They're there to help us. Mm -hmm. 
any closing words to know? I just feel like I, my angel, I've underutilized them my entire life. And I feel like now as a mother, I see a greater uh, desire to ask my angel or to ask their angels to pray for them and to protect them as they go about doing their things and becoming more independent. Our children. Our children. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, as parents, can't always hover around them all the time. No. <laughs> nope. But they always got an angel. Mm -hmm. So, friends, in closing, uh, we welcome you to seek Our Lady's intercession by praying the rosary along with us. Again, the link is around this video. Our Lady of Fatima, pray, pray for us. us. Hey, thanks for watching. Would you like to spread the message of Our Lady of Fatima? It's simple. Just share this video with others. And to get all our regular scheduled videos emailed to you, head over to catholicspeaker.com and sign up. God bless, friends.